Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Lady demands the private phone number of former employee who her son hangs out with. She throws a huge fit in store when I won't give it to her, calls police. The second story, Instead of treating the dog and the price of $250, they will pay much more. The third story. She just wants to scam a free dessert or even a free meal, but where are too stupid to come up with a valid reason? The first story is... EM throws tantrum because I won't give her an employee's phone number. This happened many years ago when I was manager at a popular sandwich shop. Because it was considered a starter job, a lot of our employees were high school age students. Most were great employees students looking to get some work experience and money before going off to college. A few of them were not so great. One such worker was a kid I'm going to call M. M was a problem from day one. He clearly didn't like working. If you told him to do something, he would find any excuse not to do it or avoid it altogether. He would talk smack to customers and we often just need to put him on kitchen duty, which he was terrible at. He constantly showed up late or didn't show up at all. He lasted about a month before I finally had to let him go. The Story this happened about six months after M stopped working for us. It was a typical weekday. I was working alone. It was a very slow shop and had a line of about three people. Enter the entitled mother. EM marched straight up to the till, bypassing a line. I need to speak to the manager. Me addressing her from the other end of the counter, where I'm still making a sub for the current customer. I'm the manager, ma'am. I'm happy to help you in a second if you don't mind waiting. EM, this is an emergency. I need help now. I excuse myself from the current customer and approach her. What's wrong, ma'am? EM. Do you have an employee named M working here? Me. We used to. He's no longer with us. EM. I need his phone number right now. Note. Due to company policy at my work, we're not allowed to give away any personal or private information of our employees to non-family members, excepting for true emergencies. Me. Are you family? EM. No. Me. Why do you need it? What kind of emergency is it? EM goes into a long, rapid story about how her son and M are best friends. She says that M is a bad influence. He's gotten her son in trouble in the past, and she tries to keep them apart. Apparently, her son didn't come back from school yesterday. He still is missing and not answering his phone. She says she's sure he's with M getting into trouble again. She wants M's phone number to call and see if her son is with him. I politely tell her that I'm sure this is a very frustrating experience, but due to company policy, I cannot give away an employee's private information. I recommend calling the local police department and seeing if they can help. I offered to call them with her. I would have happily given M's number to a police officer if they deemed it necessary. EM throws a huge fit. I don't want to call the police. M has gotten my son arrested before. If I call the police, they'll just arrest him when they find him. I just want to call M to see if my son is with him and to make him tell my son to come home. I apologize as that's the best thing I can think of. EM, get me your manager. Me, I am the manager, ma'am. EM. Get me the owner then. Me. He's on vacation on the other side of the world. I'm not to call him unless it's an emergency. EM. This is an emergency. Me. Not by his standards. How about I take your phone number and text it to him? He can call you when he wakes up. EM starts a string of profanity, but scribbled her number down on a napkin. While I'm texting it to my boss, she begins loudly whining to the other customers, who have been patiently waiting this whole time. I can't believe they won't give me his phone number. This is an emergency. My son is missing. Last time he went out with M, they got caught grafting a car and were arrested. I know that kid is with my son. Who knows what trouble he's getting him into? Can you believe she won't give me his number? Me. I've texted my boss your number and given him an update on the situation. If he gives me permission to pass on M's number, may I text it to you? EM. Why can't you just give it to me now? Me. As I said, we're not allowed to give out employees. EM. He's not an employee. You said it yourself. He hasn't been with you for a while. Me. We simply do not give out private information of our employees, current or former. EM starts another tantrum. This time, she actually pushes our cookie display onto the ground. She throws bags of potato chips at me while demanding the phone number. She runs up to the other customers in line and starts asking them to help get the phone number from me. She starts pleading with them for sympathy. I decided this had gone too far and start calling the police. EM hears me on the phone with the police and says, Oh yeah? Well, I'm gonna call the police on you. Starts fake dialing her phone. 
Hello, police? Yes, my son has been kidnapped. I'm at his store and this woman won't give me the phone number of his kidnapper. She proceeds to walk out and away from the store while placing this phone call. I go back to helping my customers. I apologize profusely to them. Most of them thought it was pretty funny. A very confused police officer showed up about five minutes later. I told him the story and gave him her phone number and her photo from our security camera. Another customer told the officer which direction she had walked away. He wrote down the information and said he'd follow up if he needed to contact him. My boss responded around midnight and I updated him on what had happened. He was glad I hadn't given out any personal information. He was sure she was a crazy lady. I never did hear back from that lady or the officer, but it sure made for an interesting experience. The second story is Dog Owner Fine for $2,100 To begin with, I work as the puppy police, aka animal control for my area. We have a large array of responsibilities, but the most important cases we handle are animal bites, as this can be a human safety concern. While most people seem to think this means we show up to someone's house to catch some aggressive snarling dog, it's usually just an excited or defensive dog that lashed out. We got lots of cases of the dog owners or even their kids bitten by the family pet. In our state, if it bites someone, it needs to go into quarantine as mandated by state law. This can be costly as the dog has to go to a veterinarian or shelter for 10 days to be monitored for signs of rabies, even if they have rabies vaccinations, leading to some very peeved off owners. So one lovely day, my coworker CW informs me about a case where the owner of the dog, D.O., brought a playful healer to a public place and the dog bit someone. My CW tells me when they went to D.O.'s place of business to fill the report out and request them to quarantine, D.O. stated their dog did not need quarantine due to rabies vaccinations. After CW informed D.O. the dog did indeed need to be quarantined, as is state law, D.O. flat out refused telling us we had no authority and would need police involvement if we were to try to take to their dog. Well, we did just that. I called the police dispatch and they send a corporal, PC, out to assist us. They have body cam, which helps a lot. CW, PC, and I give D.O. a visit and to ask where the dog is. We meet up with PC and inform them of the situation. Then all three of us approach D.O. D.O. tells us the dog's at their house, which is out of our jurisdiction. We regurgitate the previous day's information of D.O. needing to quarantine the dog, to which D.O. states the dog is an emotional support animal. Yes, we get this a lot. Obviously, this doesn't matter because it bit someone. But upon hearing this, D.O. asks for proof of the bite. This is where it gets good. I show pictures of the bites. D.O. in all their wisdom states the bites couldn't have possibly been from their dog, because that's not where my dog was biting the guy. I blinked. CW looked at me. I returned the glance. Sometimes they really do make it too easy for us. CW tells DO that we're already a day into the quarantine period and a citation will be issued for failure to quarantine. CW also mentions that these citations will be issued for every day the dog does not go into quarantine. DO is clearly aggravated at this point and is trying their best to avoid eye contact with short snippy answers. Yeah, fine. So CW asks for an ID from DO and they finally make eye contact. Dio clearly thinking they've found an advantage. Dio refuses to give an ID in front of a law enforcement officer. Luckily, Dio's spouse gave us their ID the previous day. I see PC getting restless, so I just let Dio know that we'll be issuing citations to the ID we already gathered. At the time of the bite incident, Dio grumbles and the three of us walk out. As we walk out, PC is still restless. PC tells us we should go straight to getting a seizure warrant for the dog. Since it's not our jurisdiction, I tell PC it's easier to just cite the guy and check the dog after 10 days. We thank PC, telling them we'll keep in contact with that jurisdiction's animal control and go back to work as normal. Then the citations begin. CW and I wrote citations to DO's spouse for failure to quarantine. One citation for every day the dog is not in quarantine. Then we send it to certified mail to ensure they receive the citation. Now, if they wanted to, they could take the dog to quarantine and just have the citations drop for the days the dog was quarantined. Instead, 10 citations stack, and as I hand off the last ones, the county clerk is clearly surprised at the amount of tickets for one person, saying she hopes that these are the last ones, as there are already $2,100 in citations. Each precinct decides the fines, so I was quite surprised how high this was. Day 10 has come and gone, so CW contacts DO to ask about the dog, to ensure it's still alive and not rabid. Instead of an easy we took the dog in for quarantine, or even of course the dog's fine, it was way worse. Dio tells CW that the dog went missing during the quarantine. Now in Dio's mind this clearly means the citations would be dropped, since you can't quarantine a dog you don't have. Unfortunately this doesn't matter, as they refuse since day one. 
CW informs Dio that in addition to the citations that are required to be paid, that unless the dog is found alive, we'll have to recommend rabies vaccinations to the bite victim. Apparently, the bite victim is apparently suing Dio for the bodily injury, and if Dio is found liable, they'll likely be asked to pay for the rabies vaccinations if the bite victim gets them as well. For reference, my vaccinations were $1,200 for pre-exposure. This can almost double for post-exposure. The cost of quarantining a dog at the shelter is roughly $150 to $250 for 10 days. Typically, I feel guilty giving people tickets. I don't feel pity for D.O. or their spouse, since this could have easily been avoided. We will give updates as and if they come. I sense a hearing on the horizon. And the last story is... Karen uses a complaint. It is not very effective. It was years ago, so I paraphrased the dialogue to the best of my memory. Only we went in circles way more often than I put into the account. It took a good 10 minutes, so I'm just giving you the highlights. I felt like I'm in the restaurant version of Who's On First. I was bringing her food. She took one look at it, did not even taste one bite, and she demanded we remake it. It was so quick I did not even have time to turn around yet. Me. Okay, I can do that. Could you please tell me what's wrong with it? Her. It needs to be remade. Me. I'll gladly do that. May I ask for what reason? Her. Don't you talk back to me. The customer's always right. Now remake my order. Me. I'm not talking back. I simply want you to tell me what's wrong with it. If we just send it back without knowing why you sent it back, how are we supposed to get the next one to your satisfaction? I really wanted to ask her if we're just supposed to waste more and more food without being told what's wrong, till we get it right by sheer coincidence. Her. Well, now it is getting cold. Me. When you got it, it was hot, and you still wanted me to replace it. So what was wrong with it then? Her. This is horrible customer service. How can you just refuse to replace my food? Me. Please use your indoor voice. You're disturbing the other guests. As for your food, I'm not refusing anything. I'm simply asking you to tell me what's wrong with it so we can get it right. Her. This is it. I'm leaving. Me. Okay, I'll bring you your check. Her. You better take off my food. Me. Why? What's wrong with it? Her. That's it. Bring me your manager. Me. I am the manager on duty. How can I help you? That made her finally deflate and realize she's not getting anywhere if she cannot give me a valid reason. Yup, I made her pay, and offered to put it into a to-go box. She refused that. Man, I wanted to ask her so bad why she does not want to take it home, if there was anything wrong with it. If you cannot even tell why I should take it off the bill, I'm not taking food off the bill. You ordered this and there was clearly nothing wrong with it. I'm convinced this was an attempt to scam a free meal, but by complaining so fast she shot herself in the foot. She could not claim anything with the taste was wrong or something was no properly cooked or anything like that, since she wanted it remade before she took even one bite, and that really limited her options here, and I guess she could not come up with anything, since she did not expect me to ask in the first place. Once I realized what was going on, I had to hold back my snark so hard, like I wanted to ask her if I should leave to give her time to come up with something. I warmed it up during my break and enjoyed the heck out of it. It was perfect. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.